It's Sunflower Saturday. Gators fresh off a career night from Skylar Wallace will bring us to game two of this top 15 series between Florida and Georgia. Second of three sellouts this weekend at KSP in Gainesville. With that, we welcome you inside Kyle Crooks alongside All-American National Champion Alicia Ocasio. So glad that you could join us here today. Alicia, it was electric in the ballpark last night. Of course, we'll get to what Skylar Wallace did, but the atmosphere, it was again electric. The atmosphere was absolutely electric, Kyle. I mean, the Gators' bats were on fire. And Skylar Wallace, again, her bat was so hot last night going four for four. Yeah, Skylar Wallace, four for four, three homers, seven RBI, just the third time in program history the Gator has hit three home runs in a single game. Skylar Wallace with a big bat last night, battled hard. Her first out bat came out with a home run, bringing so much energy. Her power last night was incredible. And the second time this season that a Gator has had seven RBI in a single game that tied for the third largest sum of RBI in a single game in Florida history. Going to the sixth inning, the Gators, a six-run lead, a chance to run rule Georgia. is the first time that Georgia has been run ruled this year. It capped the night, a third home run for Skyler Wallace. The emphatic high five with Tim Walton and the scrum at home plate. And there you see just what she did yesterday. Four for four, three homers, seven RBI. It was her first career multi-homer game. Tied the single game record for home runs. Tied for third most RBI in program history for a single game. With that, in game two, Alicia Ocasio, Tim Walton elects to go to Lexi Delbray, the righty. Lexi Delbray, this is such a big start for Lexi. I mean, she's coming out here and she's going to throw low to mid 60s. She can gas it up there though, but she changes speeds very well and her rise ball's her best pitch. So Georgia will go to the same lineup. So Tony Baldwin pencils in the same starting nine as yesterday. The only difference is Madison Kerpix will see the start. Georgia, they had a big fifth inning. We're able to get four runs in the fifth to cut it to a two run deficit after Florida scored the first six runs of the game. So Georgia trying to even up this series. First pitch is a strike and we are underway at 2.02 p.m. Eastern time, right on time. So glad that you can join us. Kyle Crooks, Alicia Ocasio, Jeremy Otter, our producer director and our entire crew here on this Saturday. Gators 13 to four winners last night was their 17th run rule victory of the year. First time Georgia has been run ruled. It was a season worse in terms of runs and hits given up by Georgia. Good night. Diving stop by Wallace, but no chance to get the speedy Dallas good night and will be an infield hit. Dallas good night just starting this game off with the hit not doing too much. Bringing it right back at the middle. Take a look at the defensive alignment. Kistler, Falvey, and Egan. That left to right across the outfield. Same infield as yesterday. Eccles, Wallace, Walsh, Gales, third to first. And Sam Rowe will do the catching. Bryn Thomas on her senior day will be in the starting lineup. Just her second career start. Today is the senior days of both Riley Trilicek and Bryn Thomas. They will spread out the senior days as the season goes along. So those two being honored on this Saturday. And a nice ceremony in the pregame. There's a strike to Sarah Mosley, evens the count to one and one. Definitely an emotional day for the seniors and for the whole team. I remember my senior day definitely shed a little bit of tears, so I can definitely imagine that they're feeling that energy. Here's Sarah Mosley, 331, part of the, the power, and two and three in this lineup. She's at 13 home runs this year did not get a whole lot to hit yesterday a pair of five pitch walks struck out and grounded out two and two now and georgia kicking themselves because early they had opportunities to get on the scoreboard first they had two on in the opening inning two on in the second and they could not score against hightower in those first two innings two two mosley sends this one sky high and foul I think Georgia knows that they have to bite back early in order to set the tone for the rest of the game. And to set the scene on the day, Georgia with a loss, 11-4 in SEC play. Now two games in the loss behind Tennessee. Ball in the dirt, Goodnight takes off and will have a stolen bag, easily swipes second for her 15th stolen base of the year. And Lexi Delbray just throwing a change up in the dirt. Sam not able to field it cleanly, but I think either way with Dallas Goodnight's that she was going 
get there safe, and she was already stealing. No chance. That misses, so Mosley for the third time in this series walks, and pretty much identical to yesterday for Hightower, although she did get one out before issuing back-to-back -back walks, but you got two on in the first inning for Georgia for a second straight first inning here. That's not the scenario that you want as, as a defense and as a pitcher to put your first two batters on. And here's Jada Kearney. Historically, Delbray has struggled in first innings. It takes her a while to settle into a game. And it's hard to settle in when you got Kearney standing in, who has 14 home runs, 36 RBI. Swings through a changeup, 0-2. Got Georgia on the board yesterday in the fifth, part of three consecutive doubles in the fifth inning. First and second, fought off foul. Lexi Delbray's best pitch is going to be that rise ball. It floats right through the zone. It makes you think that it's going to be a strike and then just gets up on your hands like it did. Got on the hands again, got a piece. But then what she'll do is throw her off-speed pitch, gets you off balance. I think that's what's so good about Lexi Delbray. She's able to change to the speeds and most successful when she can change eye levels as well. Delbray goes up the ladder and picks up the strikeout. She's pumped up and there's one out. Big, big strikeout by Lexi Delbray. Climbing the ladder, zipping right through the zone. You can see the spin with that rise ball. I think that's what the Gators need in this scenario. One of the hardest pitches to hit, right, Alicia? One that kind of starts at the letters and then zooms up at the last second. Absolutely. Looks like it's gonna be a strike and then just, like I said, climbs the ladder, gets you to swing through or pop something up and that's her MO, that's what she wants. So a big first strikeout for Delbray and a big first out at that after an infield hit and a walk. Fields, hoist this in the air, that angles foul. Good contingent of red and black once again behind their dugout along the first base side. Yesterday we had over 2,200 in the ballpark. Bigger crowd tonight, all tickets this weekend sold out again for the entire three game series for the first time in Florida softball history. We talked a little bit about the Gators shift last night. The outfielders are shifted a little bit towards the right side of the field, leaving a little bit of a gap, left center field. Yeah, big gap out there. They play both Kearney now fields to hit out to right center. And that just speaks to their swings. I mean, Jaden Fields kind of inside out balls a little bit more than the rest of the lineup. And the Gators are definitely shifted to accommodate that. What a career Jaden Fields has had, the redshirt senior from Kennesaw, Georgia. 24 career homers. Good at bat here. Today are 156 career game, 127 career starts. Has hit seven or more home runs over her last season, last three seasons. Had last year a career high 10 homers. Awkward swing goes through the wickets and the Gators catch a break. That was foul of third, called by home plate umpire Eric Salgado. That's a real ball you don't see Eccles scoop up, but the Gators did catch a break there. Very close down the line. Barely. <laughs> I mean, Charlotte Eccles was straddling the line and the ball just took a hop towards the foul side at the last second. Field swings and misses, so Delbray rears back, back-to-back -back K's for the Gator righty. Identical pitch you got Kearney on, Alicia. Two big outs by Lexi Delbray. You can see the spin. Her rise ball is really working right now. I mean, just climbed the ladder once again and got two outs, two strikeouts on the same pitch. She can use that today. She's going to be in good shape. Here's Lindy Ray Davis. Had a run scoring double last night. Georgia left eight on base last night. Five of the first three innings they left on. That's the name of the game. You can't leave runners on. Got to get them over. Got to get them in. 
Ray Davis pounds one off the glove of Gels, regathers, steps on first, so Delbray, much like Hightower, works into and out of first inning trouble. Delbray and her teammates are fired up. A hit, and Georgia leaves two. Well, here's the lineup that put up 13 runs on 13 hits yesterday. A new entry, Bryn Thomas, on her senior day will bat eighth. Of course, Skylar Wallace, a career day, will lead things off for the Gator lineup that got this ballpark on its feet last night. And meanwhile, we did see Madison Kerpix in relief yesterday. Alicia will get the start today. Yeah, last night, Madison Kerpix didn't really give it all that she could give. I mean, one inning pitch, five hits, five runs, but she's going to be most successful. She can spot her pitches. She has a great rise ball and a great changeup. If she can change eye levels and use her off speed, she'll be good. And she had three walks last night in her inning in relief, came in in the fifth, gave up that game-ending home run to Skyler Wallace, five earned runs to her ledger. Went over what Skyler did last night, just absurd. I think absurd is the perfect word. I mean, four hits and three home runs in one game is just. So it's we got a chance to laugh about it before. You've been in the ballpark for all three, three homer games in Florida history. An honor to, <laughs> to be the only one aside from Coach Walton to be able to see all these in person. And I think that just goes to show how well these players are seeing the ball. I mean, look at Skylar Wallace and then Brianna Little and Taylor Fuller just look like they're hitting beach balls up there. Yeah, Brianna Little did it against Mercer in 2015. Taylor Fuller did it against LSU in 2015. So the same season, 2-1, high and tight. Don't think today Wallace is going to see a whole of a lot to hit. Got to be honest with you. Yeah, and I think that's what's so great about Skylar Wallace is she doesn't need a fastball over the middle to be able to hit and be successful. She can hit bad balls well. and. That's what a lot of these players actually did yesterday. It's not like the staff was throwing a lot of pitches over the plate. I think we're going to see a lot of this today and for the rest of this series, Alicia, where Wallace drops the bat and takes her base. Showing a little bit of respect. Don't want to give her too much. But anytime you put Skylar Wallace on first base, it's an automatic double. 21 stolen bases, program record for a single season last year with 52. And here's Kendra Falby, who's hitting over 400. The problem is, you put Wallace on, you got some real big bats behind him. And Falby, Eccles, and Walsh. Wallace takes off first pitch. Davis throws from her knees, and Wallace is in there. 22nd stolen base has only been caught once this year. That one pretty close. Good throw from Davis. Skylar Wallace, not only great speed, but such a great jump always. And that goes to show in her records. I mean, only getting caught once with how many attempts that she's had is crazy. I mean, she has so many tools. 100 first stolen base in her career. Falby lifts this in foul ground, long run. Oh, almost caught by Jaden Goodwin. A possible highlight reel grab and foul ground, just in and out of the glove. I think Goodwin knows how important these outs are, and she goes hard for this ball, not able to grab it, but such a great effort. Falls right out the glove. Georgia knows they have to play close to perfect in order to contain. Ball inside to Falby here, one and two. Infield in for the lefty slapper. And Goodwin plays shallow more towards the line. There you see the configuration of the infield and outfield. Shader towards left center. Wallace at second, lead off walk here in the first. Pop foul. Defensive alignment for Georgia. Same as yesterday, Goodwin, Goodnight, and Kearney. Left to right in the outfield, you have Mosley, Armistead, Kuma, and Chambly, third to first. Davis behind the plate with Fields at the DP spot. Kerpix in the circle. Defense let Georgia down a little bit yesterday and a pair of costly errors. 
Little chopper in front of home. It's a tough play. Davis, bare hands, no throw. Wallace down to the doorstep. So Kerpik still with nobody out his corner here in the first. Faldi with so many tools. I mean, she's able to hit for power, chop the ball. And this one, she just taps it on the ground, gets a swinging bun, and able to leg it out with no throw. Putting Skyler on third, and now another speedster on first base. He has perfected that swinging bunt as Kendra Falby. There is an art to that. There is, and even with power hitters, a swinging bunt, if you're able to get to first base, you can't see that in the scorebook. All you can see is a hit. Yeah, the hits keep racking up for Kendra, over 400 on the average. Here's Charlotte Eccles. Has 47 RBI this year, 11 doubles. She's hit eight home runs. The protection behind Wallace and Falby. Swats the first pitch foul. Gators scored in the first yesterday. They're 25 and one when scoring first this year. And something's got to budge today because both Florida and Georgia have won every single game two in SEC play this year. Gators 4 and 0, Georgia 5 and 0. Georgia's never lost a series yet. That on the line today. I think the question is, can Florida use that momentum from last night and bring it into today? Keep that same intensity and energy that they had. Ball to strike here to Eccles. First and third, still nobody out. Falby takes off, snap toss to third, so the first and third play was on. Gators second stolen base of the inning. And one ball into the gap would bring in two. With Skyler Wallace and Kenja Falby on the base, is a, it's not a matter of are they going to steal, it is what pitch are they going to steal on? Is it the first pitch, is it the second? Infield drawn in, trying to cut off what would be the game's first run. Eccles scorches one to right center field, base hit. That goes all the way to the wall and brings in two. Eccles a two-run double. Gets the orange and blue on the board first. Gators on their feet for Charlotte Eccles, who just takes this changeup and ropes it to right center field. I think off the bat, Kendra Falby and Skyler Wallace knew they were scoring. But Charlotte doing a great job. Another double on her resume for the Florida Gators. Kearney was playing so deep out and right, as was Goodnight in center. Both had to angle back. Didn't really have a chance to cut off that ball. There was a big gap in right center. So Eccles now has doubled in back-to-back -back games. First two RBI of the series. Now has 49 RBI for the season. That's a team best. Eccles came in as well, SEC leader in RBI. I think when teams are playing so far back, close to the wall or the warning track, they just don't want to get beat over their heads. But instead, they got beat in the gap, and Kenja Falby did what she was supposed to do to score those runs. Here's now Reagan Walsh. Lines this in the left field base hit. Eccles wheels around third, no play towards home. RBI single for Reagan Walsh in an ambush here in the first from Florida. It's 3 nothing. Reagan Walsh with no hits last night just comes out the gate hot and takes this high pitch and drives it right over the shortstop's head. Charla Eccles sees that, freezes on the line drive, but uses her speed. She's getting all the way to home plate to score the Gators' third run. Three consecutive hits. Great start. Brings in Pal Egan. Three straight hits after a five pitch walk, still nobody out in the first inning. Three runs on three hits. And this has not been the weekend so far for Madison Kerpix. It's been tough sledding so far. You get the sense that a beast has been awoken here in this Florida offense and SEC play. Came into the series hitting just 243 in league games. Now, Egan did get a hit last night. 
walked, scored a couple of runs. Now the everyday right fielder, 10th straight start. How does Kerpix focus in? How do things change here for Georgia? I think for Madison Kerpix, she's going to have to hit some better spots. I mean, that ball was elevated, but it was still over the plate, and Reagan just got her bat up there, kept it flat, and drove, drove it over the shortstop's head. But struggling to find the zone right now, three and one. We do see Georgia's bullpen starting to heat up a little bit along that right field side. 19 pitches into the inning. Egan takes a strike. As a pitcher, you're not always going to have your best stuff every day or even every weekend. But you got to use what you have and try to try to exploit the other team's weaknesses with what you've got. I mean, her best pitches are her changeup and her rise ball, but those both have already gotten hit today. It'll be a payoff. That hitter on the arm guard. So another free pass. Still nobody out first and second. And maybe Tony Baldwin's going to ask, did she lean out? I think either way, with three balls, she was right, going to get the base. Right, it wouldn't have mattered anyway. You're right. And that's, I think Tony Baldwin came out there to ask, would that have been a strike? So here's now Sam Rowe, first and second. Nobody out. Sixth batter of this inning. Riley Orcutt is getting warm. First pitch popped up. Sydney Kuma's got the catch and a gigantic first out here for Georgia. Good job by Kerpix on getting in on Rowe's hands. I think for her to move forward and get some more out, she's going to have to. Here's Riley Orcutt, right hander. See what the leash is like here for Kerpix to try and navigate through what she's in right now. We said coming in, all three sellouts this weekend. You can hear the crowd really into this one. In the bottom of the first inning. Very big crowd today. There's the 1-0. Kisser with a, an opportunity to knock another one in for the Florida Gators. Last night scored a run. One thing I like about her, she's so consistent in her temperament and just how she is at the plate. I mean, she's reliable. You know what you're going to get out of her every, every single time she sets up. Heavy hack there, two and one. The Gators still looking to get her going. Remember last year, Kissler had a career season. First time in the starting lineup consistently. At 354 last year, made 60 starts. Prior to that, was just a pinch runner. Sometimes all you need to feel good again at the plate is just to hit one good ball. Even if it's an out, hit one solid ball, sometimes it brings your confidence back. Gets you feeling good moving forward. She carried that over to the postseason at about 430 in the postseason last year. Runners at first and second, 2-2 two -two with one out. Swing and a miss. Kerpix went up the ladder, gets the strikeout. So back-to-back -back outs here will be the eighth batter of the inning on her senior day. It's Bryn Thomas. Really good job by Kerpix here throwing that rise ball. You can see how much spin that it has and just moves through the zone. Kisser not able to catch up. And I think if she can keep doing that and just setting batters up and using her count leverage to set them up and get more outs, she'll be great. Here's Thomas on her senior day, had her first career extra base hit in the midweek against North Florida. Has four hits in her career. Richard Sr. from Trenton, nearby here at Gainesville, second career start. Yeah. 
down 0-2. Bryn Thomas from Trenton, Florida. That's actually the same town that Taylor Fuller is from. One of the other Gators that hit three home runs in one game. Just as Skylar Wallace did yesterday. Thomas holds the bat on the back shoulder for ball one. This has got to be an incredible moment for Bryn Thomas. You wonder what that heartbeat is like. He plays a specific role for this team off the bench, getting a chance to start in a big series. You know, it's got to be a little bit nerve-wracking for her, but so much excitement at the same time. But she does look poised up there. It's two for four this year, so it's taking advantage of her opportunities. Waits on 2-2. Two -two. Right down center, strike three. Kerpix had a lot of damage control to do in that first inning. Three runs on a total of three hits for the orange and blue. Charlotte Eccles, one of the big blows, a two-run double into the right center field gap, which was followed by a Reagan Walsh RBI single. Gators up three through one. Senior day for Riley Trilicek and Bryn Thomas. This is the festivities here on Sunflower Saturday before the game, the hugs, the tears, the whole deal. You get the jersey framed and the family's out on the field. The mothers of both Bryn and Riley throughout the first pitch as well today. Alicia, we were talking about it. A lot of tears, a lot of emotions. You even get a little emotional up here because you remember your senior day and the emotions that went with it. Yeah, it's definitely a bittersweet feeling to be a senior and hug your teammates on senior day, but it's also such a beautiful celebration of your career and what you've done as a Gator. Meanwhile, Lexi Delbray goes back to work. Big start for her, like Alicia outlined before the first pitch. She comes in with an over six ERA in SEC play, having thrown over 17 innings. And for her, it didn't start well in that first inning. An infield hit, a walk. And then a couple of strikeouts and a ground out, so settled in nicely after the first two batters. Yeah, those strikeouts, the her rise ball was just zipping through the zone. She climbed the ladder and she does look confident in the circle. So I think as a pitcher, it doesn't necessarily matter what you've done thus far. I think once you step in the circle each and every game, got to kind of let go of that and have next pitch mentality, next game mentality. Kuma. Pops this up, shallow left, Kissler and Wallace didn't communicate. It just lands down for a hit, and Kuma heads the second. Kissler was just waiting and waiting, not sure because of the sun, maybe she didn't see it. This ball hit sky high. I do think that the sun might have played a factor in the reason why Kissler wasn't able yeah, to get under it. it. Yeah. Now she has the sunglasses on the visor, so if, if that was the issue, I would assume that she would you know, have the sunglasses on at this point. We'll go down as a double because nobody touched it. So Sydney Kuma has her ninth double in Georgia. Nice response here to start the second. Yeah, Kuma doing her job and just legging that one out, getting a double out of it. Brings in Sydney Chamblin. Takes a strike. But it's almost law as an outfielder if the sun's out and in your line of vision in the sky. Almost have to put your sunglasses on to limit what just happened. Falby has the shades on in center. Pal Egan has the shades on in right. Kistler still shades off. <laughs> I'm not sure if it was a communication issue with Wallace or just couldn't see it. Chambly takes underneath the hands. So a three ball, one strike count. Georgia comes in two games back in the loss column of Tennessee who beat Kentucky last night. Ball four. So now if you're a pitcher in Lexi Delbra, you gotta find a way to control things here. Defense lets you down a little bit here in this inning. 
Bring in Jaden Goodwin, number eight batter in this lineup for Georgia. And for a second straight game, Georgia's had two on in the first two innings. Goodwin pops up the bunt behind home. Those have one successful sacrifice this year. We saw a lot of textbook softball with the Florida Gators last night with a few sacks that they've had to move runners over, and I think that's what's priority right now for Georgia, throwing up that sack bunt first pitch, try to get those runners over, get a run on the board. Also two for Goodwin, just one of her last 14 to start the month of April. Two and one. Sam Rowe will come out and talk to Lexi Delbre here to try and calm her down. The one thing about Lexi this year, coming off an off-season surgery after the World Series, didn't essentially pitch for an entire off-season. The walk numbers are down a lot from last year, but the strikeout numbers are down as well. They were encouraged last weekend against Auburn. The spin rate and the swings and misses were way up for her against the Tigers as Coach Walton now will jog out and have a conversation. Coach Walton has said that the missing piece to this rotation and to this team as a whole for them to make a run through a Super Regional and a possible 12th World Series, it goes through number 16 because she has the electric stuff of the staff. And Lexi Dalbury is going to mix pitches better than anyone else on the Florida Gators staff. And if she can do that, she will be on fire. But I think that timeout was just to give her a little bit of a breath. Um, no outs, runners on first and second. All they need is a little ground ball to roll it up and get an out or two. Dale Bray in this start has a couple of strikeouts already, both in the first. Cute foul. A lot of encouraging signs last weekend for Lexi. Six and two thirds against a good Auburn lineup, much like Georgia, has a lot of power, a lot of star power in that lineup. So in six and two thirds, not allowing a hit. Gators defense let him down as Delbray gave up three runs. None of those were earned that day. Good win. Stays alive. Golfed in the air, center field. Falby came in, now goes back to make the grab. Tagging from second is Kuma, a productive out for Jaden Goodwin. As Kuma heads 60 feet away from home, now first and third, and the first out of the inning. And Jaden Goodwin doing what she's supposed to do, just putting the bat on the ball, getting it out the infield, and Falby catching the ball, but able to advance a runner into 60 feet closer to home plate. I mean, now Georgia Bulldogs have the opportunity to get two runners in scoring position with the runner on third, maybe a steal or another bunt, one out. Possibly put the first and third play on here with one out. Chamley bluffed. Armistead fouls it off for strike one. Sarah Longley will start this game on the bench. So Sam Rowe doing the catching today. Longley has a really good arm behind home. Do they try and test Sam Rowe here? Runner was off as Armistead fouls it back. Seemed to be a hit and run situation with Armistead swinging at that rise ball from the zone. And the Gators also have the infield in trying to cut off what would be Georgia's first run. I think they know that with the production that Georgia has offensively, they're going to have to try to cut down that run any opportunity they get. 0 oh, 2. Delbray went to the rise ball, misses for ball one. Delbra here still has some count leverage. Only one ball. She's able to kind of finesse a little bit to try to get Amistad to get herself out. 
Just a big batter here for Delbray. You have Dallas Goodnight, top of the lineup on deck. And Armistead, a, a 293 hitter. I want to see Lexi Delbray throw her curveball out the zone right now. She's gone up and she's thrown her change up a little bit, but nothing. Throw down a second. The throw home goes wide, so Georgia will get a run. The strikeout is recorded. Gators went for the strike him out, throw him out, double play. I think Sam Rowe's got to eat that ball right there as Georgia gets on the board. So the first and third play to perfection there. As Kuma scores, Chambly took off. If you hold that ball there, that run's not scoring. Alexi Delbray with a, a great changeup. I stand corrected. I mean, that changeup is beautiful. Armistead just swinging over it. Definitely had that first and third play on, but I'm just surprised to see Skylar Wallace all the way at second base instead of the second baseman or the shortstop cutting it off to try to keep that run at third base or tag her out at home. Okay, so they're going to look at something at the play at home plate. I'm not sure if there was some sort of obstruction at home plate. First review of this game. Georgia getting their first run on a double steal, first and third play. So the strikeout was recorded. Possibly obstruction on the throw down to second. I wonder if the obstruction was over at third base going home. Oh, they're on the horn with Birmingham right now. So they are reviewing, is there interference from the batter walking back to the dugout on Sam Rowe's throw to second? So that would rule the runner out trying to steal second base. So that would, in fact, make it a double play and the run would not score. So if they rule this obstruction by the batter, that would take the run off the board. And they will say no obstruction from the batter. So the run stays on the board. Chambly down to third. And it is a strikeout for Delbray. That's a big call right there. And now top of the line appears Dallas Goodnight. Transfer from Alabama, spent one season with the Crimson Tide. Looking for our second hit of the day. Infield drawn in for the slapper. I think they want to keep that to a minimum. I mean, Dallas Goodnight just slapped it right up the middle last time. What was her 19th hit in SEC play? Actually, third best in conference games in terms of hits that you want from your leadoff batter. Three and one. I think what's important for Delby right now is to just find her tempo. I think with the review and everything, sometimes things can get things can get a little bit more intense, but she found the zone a little bit. I think her rise ball has been really great in the first inning, and she can continue to use that. Like I said before, she's going to be in good shape. One of the SEC's best, Sarah Mosley, on deck. Looping liner in the center, drops down for a base hit. Dallas Goodnight comes through with two gone, and Georgia is within one. Dallas is just seeing the ball really well today. Takes this pitch a little bit too much over the plate and just puts it into center field in front of Kendra. Talby not able to get her glove on it in no man's land. 
That's what we call it. Seventh multi-hit game for Dallas Goodnight as Mosley ambushes the first pitch on a line out to left field. Again, this all started because of some miscommunication on a double to start the inning out in left field. So Georgia gets two runs on two hits, leave one or within one, middle of two. Sort of the series we expected in terms of the offenses showing up. Already have five total runs here in game two. Gators had 13 runs last night. A 13 to four run rule victory over Georgia. It'll be nine, one and two for the Gators in front of a capacity crowd. And Avery Gells, one of those Gators that got two hits last night. I mean, had one RBI and scored two times. It was a good sign for Avery Gells, who you know, entered her Gator career, the Florida Gatorade Player of the Year. So one of the best players in the state, one of the best bats in the state. She actually has a sister on the team, Kenzie Gells. Kinsey, one of the nicest people you'll ever meet, that infectious personality. It's kind of cliche, but one of those people that'll come up and, you know, just talk to you, hold a conversation. One of the, the really good people of this program that Coach Walton has brought in. I remember when her and her sister came on a visit when I was still in the program, and I could definitely attest to that. Avery almost got hit with that one, danced out of the way, ball one. I'm surprised she got out the way, actually. <laughs> yeah. Didn't want to bruise kneecap today. It makes you move a little bit quicker. You know it's about to hit the kneecap. You know what, sometimes when you're getting out the way too, you kind of tweak something sometimes. Gels lifts this on a line to center, diving play. Dallas Goodnight showing off the glove. What a play by Dallas Goodnight. I mean, she reads this ball really well off the bat of Gels. Knows that she has to lay out and gets fully extended to get her glove to this ball and snags it. What a web gem by Dallas Goodnight. Says goodnight to Gels. Good Sorry, night, good to night. <laughs> we were talking too, one of the best names in SEC history, Dallas Goodnight, out in center field. Tremendous talent. Here's Skylar Wallace, also a tremendous talent. And one of the best talents in the SEC. Made her case for SEC player of the year with a couple of weekends left in the league. Three homers, seven RBI. One of two Gators this season alone with a seven ribby game. That's a big out because you know, it doesn't really force you to have to pitch to Skylar Wallace here with nobody on. Get the sense they're gonna pitch around her for the rest of this series. I think what's so special about Skylar Wallace is all the tools that she has in her arsenal. She can hit for power like she did last night with three home runs, but she can also drop down a bunt and use her speed to get on first base. And like we said before, once she's on first base, it's an automatic double because of how fast she can move her legs and run things out. Wallace takes ball three. She's hitting 500. An SEC play, 19 of 38, with five home runs and 15 RBI in conference play. We didn't even mention how great her eye is. I mean, she leads the team with 29 walks. I think the person that's trailing her is Kenja Falby with 15, so that's over 10. Takes an off-speed strike there, and works the count full now as Kerpix. In a big inning, hoping to bounce back after a three-run first, gave up three hits. Skaters left two. Carpick's looking to just settle in and feel good. I think the biggest thing about right now is just to feel good. Wallace launches this to right center field. Lightning strikes again. Fourth home run of the weekend. Skylar Wallace, are you kidding me?
You mentioned Skylar Wallace's power, and she does it again by hitting a shot into right center field. I mean, four home runs and five at-bats is just incredible. She takes this pitch a little bit too much over the plate. Takes advantage of that and hits a tree. I know that I'm surprised that tree's not knocked down. <laughs> Yeah, she's doing some yard work of her own this weekend, out into the trees. She now has 13 home runs. Her previous career high was nine. She's had 13 home runs and 97 at bats. Last year at eight home runs and 188 at bats. Now has six home runs for SEC play, four for this series. My apologies, four home runs and six at bats. Well, you know, begs the question now, Alicia. I mean, you almost start to get the Barry Bonds treatment, where you just get up there and you you signal for the intentional walk and move on with your life here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they can do that now. Falvey cracks one on the line to center field. But the top half of this lineup, they have shown up and shown out this weekend. And the versatility, we saw the slap chop, little swinging bunt her first time up, and that one more of a power slap swing. Yeah, Kendra Falby is just able to do it all as a slapper, and she stands in sometimes, but she can definitely put that ball past you and hard slap through the infield for singles. And again, almost an automatic double. Which pitch is she going to steal on the first or second one? Gator's fifth hit. As Coach Walton always says, we need our great players to be that. And their great players have been great this weekend. So far in this game, one through four, all has a hit, three of which have RBI. 1-0. Eccles hoists this in the air, shallow right center. Long run for Kearney will make the grab. She was playing almost cleats on the warning track for Charlotte. I think that just shows the respect that they have for lefty Charlotte Eccles trying not to get beat out in front, knowing that she's going to put a powerful swing on that ball, but just didn't do it enough that at bat. And here's Reagan Walsh at an RBI single her first time. Reagan Walsh with her first hit of the series, last at bat, trying to see if she can do it again and get on base. It was hitless last night. Just really good, now the outside corner. Really good spot by Madison Kerpix. Sprinkling that change up in there. It's a rise, change, screw, and a curve. And what I like about Madison Kerpix is she can use her changeup and her rise ball as strikeout pitches depending on how she sets these batters up. I think if you have the versatility and the arsenal to be able to throw multiple pitches really well, you're going to keep batters off balance, but you just have to spot them and be able to spin them through the zone. See the righty, Riley Orcutt, still getting loose. 2-1. Walsh got jammed, lifts this to medium deep left. That's Jaden Goodwin who makes the catch. Skylar Wallace has not done it just once, not twice, not three times, but four times. She's homered again the encore to a career performance on Friday night. Absurd, that's one word to describe Skylar Wallace so far. 13 home runs now, four on the weekend. This is what we talked about. Her home run numbers last year, 188 at bats. She had eight home runs. That was a career high. Wasn't really a home run hitter at Alabama. She's come here and officially found that fifth tool to become a five-tool player. And that's the power. And ironically enough, Coach Walton says, you know, 
for Wallace, the one thing that's been missing in SEC play has been the power numbers. They've gone down. Well, that has changed in a big way. She's now hit six in conference games, four in two games. I think that just goes to show her work ethic in the offseason and how much that she's gotten better even throughout this season. We talked about her numbers getting better in SEC play, and that just shows not only your physicality, how great that is, but also your mindset, because this, this conference is hard. It's a grind, and it's not easy. I mean, Wallace is making it look easy right now, and, and you've been in those parts of your career where you're just seeing it unlike any time in your career. It just comes in as a beach ball. Yeah, some days you just see the ball way better than you do any other day, and it's kind of a, sometimes it's a coin flip, but I think if you can master repeatability when you're in the cages and just try to be consistent and hit more pitches well, you'll be successful at the plate. And I think that's exactly what Skylar Wallace is doing because every single pitch that she's hit has been a different pitch. Just off the plate, five pitch walk to Jana Kearney. And that is Delbray's third walk of this start. Came back to Biter in the second. And a little bit of a defensive miscue on the first and third. He was able to score, get some runs in for Georgia. Brings in now Jaden Fields. Georgia down a pair of runs, having won all five SEC series. This is critical if they want to keep pace with Tennessee. Auburn looming as well. They're eight and five. And a loss today would be Georgia's fifth in the league. Gators entered the weekend at six and six in league games, so a chance to get a couple games over 500 for the preseason pick to win the SEC. Fields got jammed high in the air. Right tackles. A great job by Lexi Delbray just jamming Jaden Fields with her rise ball inside. Especially with these big hitters in the heart of the lineup, you have to figure out a way to get them out and a lot of the times how to get them to get themselves out and I think that's just what she did. Got her to get jammed in foul ball fashion. Lindy Ray Davis, roll strike one. She's on a five game hit streak right now. Came in best average on the team at 4.02. He's had a really good season. The sophomore behind home plate. And has had a scorching hot April. Nine of her last 20, three home runs, nine RBI in this month. Five runs scored. An opportunity for the Florida Gators to roll a double play and get two with one out. Half field has shifted a little bit for Lindy Ray Davis. This gets uh, that hit. Lindy Ray Davis, so hit by pitch. Second free pass of the inning. Take another look at it. Yep. Clip that arm guard. Looks like she's wearing an Evo shield on her forearm as well. You don't see that very often. Usually see an arm guard on your elbow or on your shin, but it looks like a few of them. Right now, Kuma has one under her knee, and that's not something that you see. But I guess they're just trying to protect. You might foul balls off a lot, but you can see it right there under her knee. Did you wear that shin guard when you played? I didn't, and maybe I should have, because I did foul <laughs> a lot of balls off of my ankle. And the thing about those is, once you foul a ball off your ankle, you're going to have a swollen ankle for maybe one to two months. And it changes your swing, right? It, it kind of hurts how you swing on inside pitches because you know there's that possibility. Sometimes, I think, but a lot of the time you just have to power through it. I mean, she's, yeah, she's guarded up. I mean, she's just trying to stay protected. Two and two. I think a few more Evo shields and you can call her a knight. <laughs> yeah. 
This is like an Evo Shield infomercial right now. Two on with one out and a 2-2 two -two count to Sidney Kuma. Here it comes. Ball three. Georgia last night with runners in scoring position were three of 11 while the Gators were six of 14. High fly ball, left field with some carry towards the pole. Kistler leaps and it's gone. Sydney Kuma leaves the yard her ninth of the year and puts Georgia in front. So much excitement from the Georgia Bulldogs. You see Kuma grittying at home plate while her teammates celebrate her. I mean, she has a great at bat and lets the count get deep, but puts such a powerful swing on this ball. And this ball is so high. Kissler does all that she can to time it up and put a glove on it, but doesn't wasn't able to, to grab it. And Kuma scores three. Just inside that foul pole, as Chamley swats one to left center with a charge behind it. Falby in front of the wall makes the grab for out number two. That was another thing coming into this game. Georgia had not been homerless in back-to-back -back games for the entire year. Didn't hit a home run last night. And their first home run of this series is a gigantic one. Puts Georgia in front for the first time in this series. We did say yesterday, Kuma is trying to be the toughest out in their lineup, and I think that pitch was just a little bit too plated. I mean, she does a really good job at getting behind it and squaring it up, but... Goodwin pops this up to Walsh at second, but not before Georgia has some home run power of their own. An SEC best now, 65th home run as a team inside the foul pole and left. When it lands, the Dogs take a 5-4 lead. <laughs> Biggest swing of the weekend for Georgia. Three-run Sidney Kuma home run inside the left field foul pole that has given Georgia their first lead of this series. And the gritty to boot for the Georgia second baseman. 5-4, Georgia now in front. Kyle Crooks, Alicia Ocasio, our entire crew. As Pat Legan gets hit, no, they're going to call her back, say that she leaned out. Have to take another look at it. Tim Walton's going to want to have a conversation with Eric Salgado. That rise ball inside. The rule here is if the ball enters the box, and the batter attempts to get out the way, but it still hits them. The batter gets awarded first base, but if the ball's in the river and the batter gets hit, they're staying. Yeah, it looked like she leaned out. Very similar to her first plate appearance when she was hit by a pitch, but nonetheless, it would have been ball four, and that's when Tony Baldwin came out to argue the fact that, you know, would it have been a strike? So this time gets called back. I think the Gators' MO is to use those rules to their advantage. Well, it was ruled a ball, so it's now 2-0. and oh. There is an art to being hit. You know, one of your teammates, <laughs> Nicole DeWitt, was so good at it. You know, you, you crowd the plate, kind of know to bend the rules in your favor a little bit, and uh, you maybe lean into it just a little bit. Egan swats a line drive in a right field, so she'll get on anyway with a hit. Worked to her advantage. She didn't even do too much. She just poked that ball right over the second baseman's head. She said, if I'm not going to get on with a hit by pitch, I might as well get a hit. I think that's going to do it here for Madison Kerpik. So tying run on base here for the Gators in the home third. Looks like they'll go to Shelby Walters. Last night's starter transfer from Duke, so we'll be a different righty inside the circle. We'll tell you all about her when you return to KSP.
So Alicia, the Georgia Bulldogs will go to last night's starter, Shelby Walters, here in relief of Madison Kerpix. Shelby Walters, a little bit of a different look than Madison Kerpix. She's going to throw harder in the high 60s and stay low in the zone, throwing her drop ball and her change and curve. Yeah, compliments Madison Kerpix well. She also does really well in relief, as Tony Baldwin said. So this situation isn't foreign to her. Rowe bounces this foul. Actually has you know, three saves this year, so it proves the point of how she's been able to come in in relief and you know, shut the door. 119 innings this year, 23 walks to 86 strikeouts. 15 and two record for Shelby Walters. This is her graduate year, a chance to go back to her home state in Georgia. Grew up about three hours away from Athens in Kohutta, Georgia. 1-1. One, one. Threw an SEC no-hitter against Mississippi State in a run rule shortened game. First for the Dogs in league action since 09. No-hitter against Samford. Part of the fifth best transfer class that Georgia had brought in this year. Runner takes off, hit and run was on. Chambly for some reason goes to second. Relay is wide, Egan takes off for third. Egan's in headlong. I don't think Chambly knew the runner took off because it made that play incredibly difficult to get the lead runner. Sam Rowe doing her job. There was definitely a hit and run on. You can see Egan at first base automatically going to second base. I'm not sure what happened at second. She must have took her foot off, but Sam Rowe getting to first base. The ball got away a little bit, but Pal Egan with her instincts just sees that and takes third base. Now they have a first and third opportunity to get Rowe to second base with two runners in scoring position. So a throwing error in E6 is what allows Egan to head down to third. A fielder's choice for Sam Rowe, and here's Katie Kistler with first and third. Now it's easier said than done. If you're Sidney Chambly in that spot, you're playing inside the back, so you can't see the runner took off. And you look to your right and you see Egan's a lot closer than maybe you thought heading to second base, so made it a bang-bang play. And then the relay was wide to at least get one out. This is where the Gators thrive, especially in this ballpark against uh, opponent mistakes. Georgia had two key errors yesterday, now three errors for the series. Yeah, and good teams are going to take advantage of those mistakes as they did yesterday with that error. But I think in these meetings, you got to figure out how to get an out in this first and third situation. I'm sure they're talking about what play to put on, what to do. Last at bat had a hit and run. Going to see if Sam Rowe takes second, if they're going to try to protect her in the box with Kistler bunting or doing another hit and run, we'll see. The well, Gators trying to respond after a three spot in the top half of the third, a three run home run from Sidney Kuma inside the left field foul pole. With Georgia's first lead of the series, can they hold on to it here? And I think that's why they made that pitching change to Walters to try to put a stop to it and shift the momentum. Kistler jam foul. See Egan over there with a head start. I think she was going on any ball in the dirt. Sometimes when you're at third base, you see a ball in the dirt going to the right side. It's automatic that you try to get to home on that. Quarter infielders are way in for Kistler here, as are the middle infielders. With no outs on the board, I think Kissler's job is to just either poke something through the infield or get it to the outfield, whether it's a line drive or a sack fly. I think with Egan over there at third base with pretty good speed, she'll be able to score on something like that. Just off the plate outside with two strikes, takes away the possibility maybe of a a squeeze type of bunt to force the issue. That was still a really good pitch, even though called a ball by Shelby Walters. We call that a pitcher's pitch, a pitch that we think 
can maybe snip the corner and get called for a strike, but just not enough. Gets the rolls this over, sneaks through the right side, base hit. Going first to third is Sam Rowe. The throw is wide as Egan scores, and we're all tied up at five. So good with two strikes by Katie Kistler. Just hammering this ball that's on the outside corner in the 3-4 hole in between the second and first baseman, able to advance not only Sam Rowe from first to third, but Pal Egan from third base. An easy run. And now runners in first and third again. Gators now 20 hits for the series. Great piece of two-strike hitting from Katie Kistler there. And here's Bryn Thomas on her senior day. Getting the start and a chance here with first and third. One thing I love about senior day is you get to, everybody gets to stand up and celebrate the seniors when they're in the game. There's usually some form of ceremony where Coach Juan will take you out and the whole stadium will stand up and clap on their feet, just celebrating you as a Gator, as a person, and just thanking you for being a Gator. It's such a great accomplishment. Thomas, her second career start, one, one of the best moments in her career was a game that didn't necessarily count. It was the exhibition against Team USA where she hit a, a late RBI double against Rachel Garcia. Two one. Underneath the hand, so if you lose Thomas here, you got the nine spot on deck. Already one in in the inning. Georgia going to one of their stars, Shelby Walters. Doesn't seem to have it yet. And if Bryn gets on, like you said, every Gales will be up to bat. And she lined out to left field last that bad, obviously seeing the ball well. Haters count, now it's full. You know with Walters, she's gonna throw around the zone, so here, Bryn Thomas just has to look for something around the zone and try to hit it hard. Thomas, right back to Walters, had Rowe dead to rights. They float one to first, the throw is wide of home. A run comes in as Kistler goes down to third. So instead of coming home, they had Sam Rowe dead to rights between third and home. I think Thomas is out at first. And they just float one over to first. And just not a great throw to home plate. I mean, Sam Rowe seeing that throw, that lob over to first base by Shelby Walters and takes off. But I think if the throw was in front of the plate, they might have had a chance to get Sam Rowe at, a, at home plate. It should be an RBI in her senior day for Bryn Thomas. The out goes one to three at first. They did say the tag was there on Thomas. And typically with runners on, if you know you're a dead duck over at first base, you want to stop and allow the runners to try to advance and get an extra base. But I think that throw was just a little bit too bang bang and Bryn wasn't able to even see the ball. Out of the line. Well, Brent Thomas gets an RBI, the seventh of her career. Sometimes you just put the ball in play and see what happens. Yeah, and in that she did. And Sam Rowe was definitely taking home plate. You can see her there on the third base line, keeping her feet moving, knowing that she wanted to take home plate to get the go ahead. Put the Gators up 6 5. Well, Avery Gales has had a good series, has had three RBI yesterday. Infield is still in. Georgia did get the first out as the Gators have reclaimed the lead, so a short-lived lead for the Dogs. It's now 6-5. to five. You can hear the energy in the ballpark with the cheers from the fans. We talked about it last night. When you have such a 
high energy from the fan base. It almost translates to the production on the field. I mean, you could see it. 13 hits last night from the Gators offense. The crowd was on their feet multiple times, and you heard it again today with orange and blue. So the book is closed on Madison Kerpix. Two innings, six hits, five runs, four of those earned a walk and two strikeouts through 54 pitches. This has just been tough for Georgia pitching all weekend. And credit this Gator lineup, they came in with really big numbers. It has, but they still have the opportunity to close the door. I mean, she has some count leverage right now to work with to get them out of this inning. And a few innings left. I mean, we have four innings left to put some more runs on the board. We talked about it yesterday, the offense going tit for tat, but Florida just able to pull the win out last night and trying to do it again today. Run roll victory yesterday in six innings. Pitch to Gels, ball one. It's the 17th run rule victory for the Gators. First time that Georgia had been run ruled here at KSP since 2009. We touched on it last night. Georgia has celebrated on this field twice. 2016, 2021 Super Regionals. Gels rockets one down the line and right foul into the burn. I think on this, with the count being one, two, Shelby Walters has to do a better job at throwing around the zone, not trying to give Avery Gales too much to hit. I mean, she squared a ball up last at bat, just squared one up foul. But she has some room to work with, with having a few more balls to throw to try to get Gales to get herself out. One, two, right back to Walters again. Eyes back the runner, kiss her now off the bag. It took an extra secondary step towards home plate. Gets chased back. That is the second out. Well, now you get a chance here for Skylar Wallace. Last time she was up, got everybody on their feet again. A fourth home run of the weekend. It is absurd. Absurd has definitely been the word between today and last night. Usually bird is the word. Today <laughs> it's absurd. Absurd is the word. It all rhymes. Wallace now 13 home runs, 43 RBI. And coming off a season where Coach Walton put it, she had video game like numbers. Was the only known player in NCAA Division I history with 70 plus hits, 70 plus runs scored, 50 RBI, and 50 plus stolen bases. I mean, you can't teach those numbers overnight. Was the number 16 player in the top 100 for D1 softball. I almost think that's kind of underselling how good Skylar Wallace is. And I think when you have such great talent on the field, but you're also a leader, a vocal leader and lead by example, and you're great in the locker room, I think it just elevates your game that much more. Yeah, not anything to hit for Skylar Wallace. Second time that she has been walked. Sprints down to first, just to get the attention of Georgia. Yeah, she sprints down to first, eyeballing second base, just to see if second base is, a, is open to maybe get two runners in scoring position. And we know that the Gators have been taking a little bit more risk today. I mean, we've seen a lot of risk being taken at third base today. and. It's worked in their favor every single time. Well, you got speed at the corners here. Do you dare test it here? A first and third play with two outs. Try and get a throw. The infield is in. Feel like she's going first pitch. What do you think? Think so. And she is slapped right to Mosley. Caught it on a line. Did they call it out? They did. So first pitch, Falby lines out to third. Gators reclaim the lead with front of a very good crowd. 
And essentially a double header day between Florida and Georgia. First the softball diamond, and then the baseball diamond across the street, southwest side of campus. Georgia won game one of the baseball series last night, comeback fashion. It was an odd game. There were three grand slams in the game. Gators hit two of them and lost. Georgia came back to win it. It's not often that you hit two grand slams yeah, in one game lose. and lose. So Georgia winning on the baseball diamond last night. Look to take the series today. Gators look to take the series with a one-run lead. Georgia has not lost a league series yet this year. Second spot in the SEC. Gators trying to climb up the standings. Right now tied at 7-6 and six with Alabama and Kentucky. Kentucky was in action with Tennessee prior to the first pitch of this one. Alabama is at Mississippi State. They won last night behind Montana Fouts will be a member of that Team USA group that will head to Ireland this summer. There's five total SEC players. The only active is Montana Fouts that will be on that team. The World Cup qualifying. Armistead off speed goes down on strikes. To finish up that note, Tim Walton and Tony Baldwin will both be assistants for Heather Tarr on that staff this summer. And you see here, Lexi Delbray just Using that rise ball multiple times this at bat. I already saw the first pitch. Armistead swinging through and throws it again after setting her up. So a second time Armistead has struck out. Went to the rise to Delbray. And that's what Delbray does best. Her pitches are spinny and floaty. And when she can really spin that rise ball, that's when you're going to see a lot of swing and misses for Delbray. Good night, digs it out to right. Egan playing shallow, makes the catch and stride. That's a big part of Mike Bosch when he came over here, Alicia, as the pitching coach taking over for Jen Rocha is the objective analysis of these pitchers. They're very deep in analytics, but then again, who's not in baseball and softball now? And they looked at the spin rates from Lexi Delbray this past weekend against Auburn. Everything was way up from where it was. And I think when you have spin, I mean, to be successful in the, on the pitcher's mound, you have to have spin speed or spots. And I think when Lexi Delbray is utilizing her spin, using her spin, hitting those spots, because her balls, she's throwing in the low 60s. And when she can do just that and throw her change up and spin her rise ball, she's going to get those swing and misses and those check swings. Yeah, Coach Walton said you know, it's credit to her being able to snap her arm through a little harder, her wrists. She had the off-season surgery. Didn't really pitch consistently until the leading up to the first week of the season. It was working her way up to where she could eventually play and didn't start until mid-February. Well, February 19th was her first appearance. Sometimes after surgery, you come back a little bit stronger. Lexi Delbray looks really confident in the circle now, giving up five runs, but I feel like you know what's going to happen when you have the Georgia Bulldogs as opponents. They're going to put up runs on the board, but in order to win, you're going to have to put up more, and I think that's just the name of the game. But to your point with Coach Bosch coming in, I mean, Florida has had an All-American pitcher ever since 2007, and Elizabeth Hightower carrying on that legacy. Another walk to Sarah Mosley. That's her fifth of the series. Here's Jada Kearney with two outs. She's walked and struck out. On corks on one to left field. Kissler turns, looks. You can kiss that goodbye. Oh, that was crushed off the top of the scoreboard out in left center. And the dogs strike again and reclaim the lead. A two run homer from Jada Kearney. I think that ball was a no brainer off the bat. I mean, it was so high. So high left the ballpark over the scoreboard she just does a really good job of this pitch that's elevated she sees it and she keeps her bat up in the zone and just drives her hips 
off the bat she's trotting because she knows it's out of the park. I think it went over the scoreboard actually. Not sure if it clipped the netting that covers the Presley Stadium lettering just above the video board because <laughs> it hit something and then it fell quickly right in front of that video board, but that was going over. That was a long home run. Now Fields sends one in the air to Falby in center. This will stay in the ballpark. A Kearney, a team best 15th home run of the year. Georgia's second homer of the game, and the Dogs have reclaimed another lead in an offensive shootout between these two. For Georgia, this is their 19th game with multiple home runs. They've hit two so far. A three-run home run from Sidney Kuma in the third. A two-run home run from Jada Kearney has put Georgia back in front, seven to six. Skaters have scored in every frame so far. Have out hit Georgia seven to five. And you think it comes down to which offense will blink first here in this one? It's been an offensive display. Kyle Crooks, Alicia Ocasio, Jeremy Otter, our producer director, our entire crew on this Saturday. Alicia wishes she was part of this game right now. You fit <laughs> right in here. About to hop down from the press box and put a uniform <laughs> on. But definitely a big matchup in the box. I think that's another thing we talked about earlier today and last night. You know what Georgia is going to produce when they step into the box. And just seeing these teams go tit for tat, it's been fun to watch, it's, it's been fun to call, but like you said, I think it's, who's gonna blink first? Yackles on Corks on a scorching line drive off the green padded wall, and because it was hit so hard and played so well off the carom, it's just a long, loud single. Ready a two-run double today for Eccles, so it's a multi-hit game. And Charlotte's been seeing the ball so well. I mean, she hit another double earlier in the game, and this ball she tees up again and hits it off the right field wall. But like you said, the right fielder does a good job at playing this ball and throwing it in, so Charlotte's only able to take one base. Third time the Gators have had the leadoff batter on. Eighth hit, and here's Reagan Walsh. By the way, the Bulldogs have now hit 28 home runs in SEC play. That's far and beyond the best mark in conference games. And that's hard to do with the caliber of pitching in this league. They've played their fair share of these close, nail-biting games in SEC play. Six one-run games in SEC play. Two of those against Arkansas, had one in the Kentucky series, one in the A&M series, a walk-off win in the Auburn series. Rolled sharply through the hole at short into left field. Back-to-back -back base hits from three and four in the Gator lineup. And still nobody out for Pal Egan. Reagan Walsh just does a good job at teeing this ball up. On the outside corner gets around it and Armistead just shaded a little bit too much to second base to try to get the double play. But I think if she was in a normal shortstop position, she'd be able to get this ball. But like I said, shaded up a little bit, and Reagan Walsh does just enough to get it past there. Now runner on first and second. So Walsh a two-hit day, and here's now Pal Egan, who singled her last time and scored. And Shelby Walters finds herself in more trouble here. Two on, nobody out in relief of Madison Kerpix. Allowed four earned runs, five total runs in two innings. Still a double play opportunity for the Georgia defense, but 
I would think that they want to get this lead out at third. So I don't know how much they can do. Georgia will get Kylie Macy just to slowly jog down to that bullpen just in case. Things go sideways in this inning. Egan, chopper to short. They go to third, and like you saw the future, Alicia, they do get the lead runner at third for the first out. Exactly what Shelby Wal Walters wanted to do is get a ground out and made it easy for Armistead to just put her glove on it and throw it to third base for the out and wanted to try to get the double play but wasn't able to get it to second base fast enough with the speed of the ball getting hit. Second ground ball out from Georgia pitching. And here's Sam Rowe. Both of those coming from Shelby Walters. Kerpix did not have one ground ball out. There's Sam Rowe, reached on a fielder's choice her last time, was able to score on an E6. You see Sam Rowe going to her timing slap. She puts her bat out as if she's gonna bunt, but pulls back. I think sometimes players do that in order to Make sure that their timing is good when they get their hands back into a launch position. Rolled back up the middle, backhand pick by Kuma to second for one and a double play. Well done by Sydney Kuma, a 4-3 DP ends the inning. So the Gators do not score in the frame. Kuma who's flashed the glove at times in this series, a big DP to end the frame. On her senior day, Riley Trilicek had a chance to pitch. Was in the circle last night in relief. Did get the save, and Alicia, the Gators will go to the lefty down ball pitcher. Riley Trilicek does really well in relief, looking to get the win today. One thing Riley Trilicek does really well is spots her ball. She's going to throw a curveball, and she's going to throw a combo with that drop ball down in the zone to get a swing and miss. Her ball is really heavy and she does a really good job at going with that one-two punch away from those lefty batters. That's extremely hard to hit, a ball going away from you, especially as a lefty. So Delbray's day is done. Get you her final line through 87 pitches in the start. And leaves trailing so it can only get the loss here. Went four innings, five hits, seven runs, five of those earned. Free passes hurt her, four walks, and gave up a pair of home runs. Did have four strikeouts. Lindy Ray Davis, cue shot to third, some wicked spin into the glove of Eccles for out number one. Riley flashing her change up early, getting Lindy Ray Davis to swing a little bit too early, hits off the end of the bat, and Charlotte does a good job of keeping her eye on it. Sometimes with those balls that are hit off the end of the bat, you'll see the ball kind of take weird spin and Charlotte able to get first out of the inning. Brings in Sydney Kuma. And that three run home run in the third inning, just inside the foul pole. Gave Georgia the lead. Sprays one foul. Riley Trilicek, she's going to keep the ball low. She gets getting a lot of ground balls. Looping liner, Wallace. Here, Trilicek's number makes the catch. I say ground balls, and then she just gets jammed for a little flare. A good job by Riley. Good job by Riley getting that out, getting her jammed inside. Chambly, who's up now, just missed a home run her last time. Hit one to the warning track out in left center field. Also from the state of Georgia, Dallas, Georgia.
Even though her last hit was a fly out to, to left field, that still gives you a little bit of confidence that you're able to square a ball up hard. And like I said, even, even though it wasn't a hit, going into this at bat, she knows that she's able to put her bat and square it up on another ball. One of those versatile pieces for Tony Baldwin can play infield, outfield. Rolls one over to second. A couple extra hops for Wall, still able to get Chambly hustling down the line. So Trilicek comes in, faces the minimum, five, six, and seven, go down one, two, three. We now slide to the bottom of the fifth inning. Picture perfect day for softball at KDC Show Presley Stadium. A little hot outside, as you'd expect. We head towards the month of May, 85 degrees. Kind of humid out. Had some really good weather. First two days of this series. Hopefully Sunday obliges as well for the final game of this series. Myself, Alicia Ocasio will have the call tomorrow, 12 Eastern first pitch for the finale of this three game set. Georgia's 7-6 lead here as Kistler swings away for strike one. Here in the bottom of the fifth. Both offenses putting up a zero their last time to the plate. Cholacek working a 1-2-3 top half of this inning. Walter still remains out there after she entered in in the third inning. Walter's trying to hold the Gators to a minimum to be able to pull game two out with the win. But as you said, beautiful weather outside, but I'm also glad we're in the AC because it's a little bit hot. Yeah. You get a tan out today, though. <laughs> Need my sunscreen if I'm going out there. Your favorite seat in the ballpark, Alicia, as a fan, which you don't necessarily get to do a whole lot, but would you do the Adirondack chairs over there in the left field corner, or would you prefer the berm? Uh, I think anyone who the knows shade. me knows I'm going to sit in the shade. Okay. I'll find the best seat possible, but in the shade. If not, I'll... Bring an umbrella or something. Kistler pokes this to short on a backpedal. Armistead to throw to first. And Kistler is retired. Armistead does a good job at drop stepping, making sure that she's playing it on a good hop so that ball doesn't play her. Gets at an angle and throws her out at first. Well, now the Gators will go to Sarah Longley here in the eight spot. Longley didn't get the start today. Get restored to Bryn Thomas on her senior day in the DP spot, who did get an RBI ground out. But it's Longley who had a run scoring single yesterday in game one. I well, would have loved to see her get on base so that they could give her her senior day celebration. But I guess an RBI doesn't hurt either. Yeah. Right now, the difference in the game, a two-run home run from Jada Kearney. That was in the fourth inning, her 15th of the year. Almost exactly how we expected this series to go. Maybe not necessarily the result last night in a run rule victory, but the amount of hits and runs we've had over the last game and change. 1-1. Can definitely agree to that. I mean, the production that the Georgia offense provides leading the SEC in a multitude of categories as well. That's definitely what you can expect coming into last night's game, leading in slugging percentage and hits, also home runs and triples. I thought, I thought another thing that was interesting, just looking over stat lines, Georgia going into this weekend had almost 100 more bases than the Florida Gators. Yeah, in terms of total bases, there was a distant second for Florida in the SEC. Really Just good missed. pitch by Shelby Walters. I mean, that's the pitch that you want to get called for a strike, especially with a 2-2 count. Now 3-2 having to Really try to finesse Sarah Longley. Oh. 
Ball four. So Longley comes in, presumably will take over behind the plate. And now you have the nine spot up with Skylar Wallace looming on deck. Avery's lined out to center, is grounded back to the pitcher. A short and takes a strike. Definitely textbook softball to try to lay a bun down here to get Sarah Longley over to second in scoring position to try to tie up the ball game. You can see the third baseman kind of pinched in a little bit to try to defend that bunt. If she were to do it again. Gales does not have a sacrifice bunt laid down this year successfully. Launch in the air to right field. This one is gone. Avery Gills leaves the yard and puts Florida back on top. What a timely hit by Avery Gells. I mean, she didn't lay down that punt for a reason. She took this ball on the inner half of the plate and just drives it over the right field fence. Turns her hips on it and gets all of it over Jaden Field's head. Putting the Gators up by one run. Such a special celebration and a timely hit for Avery Gells. You can see all the smiles and the celebration by the Florida Gators. And having, you know, somewhat of a career series run production wise. Now five RBI for Avery Gells over the last two games. And that's her first home run of the season, just third of her career. And it comes at a big moment, clears the bases still with one out. The Skyler Wallace hit her fifth home run yeah. of the series. Well, now with the bases empty, I don't think you really throw a whole lot to her. And this is her third time with the bases empty this game. This has been a, a fun game today. It's been you know, two heavyweight offenses going back and forth. And you can sense we are not done. That final, that score you see right now, it's, it seems like it's very far to being settled. Yeah, we have a few more innings to go with this game. I mean, they've been playing tit for tat as we talked about earlier. This is just some good hitting. I mean, in pressure situations, timely hitting, getting bunts down. We mentioned before, this is what Georgia does, but Florida doing a really good job at just biting back. Well, the Gators now, this is the 18th time they've had 10 or more hits. That Gell's home run was their 10th hit. What a feeling that must be. What a time for your first home run of the season. Wallace digs it out to left. And that is the first time that Skyler Wallace has been retired in this series. Big out by Shelby Walters to get Skyler Wallace out. I think when you can get your leadoff batter out, I think it sets the tempo and builds confidence within your group and your team, and even within yourself. Gators have had production one through nine, up and down this lineup in this series. Also had RBI from seven, eight, and nine in their lineup today. And that's an area where, you know, in a 
perfect world for Tim Walton. He's wanted to see more from seven through nine in the order. So that's the Kisslers, the Avery Gales of the world. When you can see production from the bottom of the lineup, it just kind of pieces everything together and you're able to fire on all cylinders and with that production, they're able to put all these runs up and all these hits on the board and you see that reflected in the score right now and you saw that last night as well. Two balls and a strike to Kendra Falby. There's two hits, is lined out. Pokes it foul. And if you add up the runs between the softball series and the baseball series, you're gonna have a pretty high number. There's the final score in baseball, 13 to 11 last night in favor of Georgia. Count full. It's not every day that you see these high scoring games within the SEC. It's usually, it's usually a pitching duel that you see, but I think already this whole series, you've seen just a lot of offense and a lot of production in the box. Because these teams are hitting, but I think it's who can hit more. It's the name of the game. Tough play here for Armistead and the throw is late. Really nothing you can do with that. Third hit for Kendra Falby. And Armistead a good job just to get it there to maybe have a chance. And all that Kendra Falby has to do is slap that ball on the ground and give it enough air time to get over to first base. And she does just that. Swinging away, most of the at bat, but then two strikes just knocks one down and chops it over to shortstop. Fourth hit of the series for Kendra Falby. Now it's up to Charlotte Eccles. Got a two run double, a single. She has a multi hit day. And has hits in 20 of the last 26 games with 31 RBI, six home runs in that stretch. So it's been pretty consistent over a pretty large sample size here. Next RBI would get her to 50. She had 59 all of last year. That led the team. Right now leads the SEC six nationally in RBI. We talked about last night how much of a professional hitter that Charlotte Eccles is. With all those RBIs and again, with such a low strikeout number. Coming into today with only five strikeouts on the year. Runner takes off, Eccles topples this over and goes foul. Gators had a hit and run, I think, or maybe even a run and hit for Kendra Falby to try to steal second base. Nine times out of 10, Charlotte Eccles is gonna be able to put her bat on the ball. So I think they had a run and hit on with Kendra Falby stealing second, knowing that Charlotte was gonna get a hit or at least put the ball somewhere. Runner takes off again, rolled over to second. That hits the runner for the out. So that will do it, but not before. An unusual suspect, Avery Gells, the number nine batter for the Gators, putting Florida back on top. Another home run for the orange and blue, Avery's first of the year. Avery Gell's first home run of the season, a two-run homer in the bottom of the fifth. Gators trailed heading into the inning, now reclaim the lead eight to seven. Both of these offenses exchanging right hooks here on this Saturday. Gators looking for a series victory over Georgia. It's been Georgia who's had a lot of fun in this ballpark of late, including the 2021 Super Regional when they went to their fifth Women's College World Series. Won both games of a best of three, so didn't even play the if necessary game led by Mary Wilson Avant that year. I have a pinch hitter here. 
This is Marissa Miller, who's going to hit now. This is in the eighth spot for Jaden Goodwin. Marissa Miller sharing some innings behind the plate this year with Lindy Ray Davis, the freshman. I think she surprised Tony Baldwin with how well she's done in the box this year. Yeah, Miller 271, a couple of home runs, 10 RBI. I think it's only gotten hotter. Kyle Riley so. Chilicek seemed to have put her hair in a bun to keep it off her neck. <laughs> Riley had a 1-2-3 inning in the fifth. There's a strike. can tell Miller wanted that just a little bit, but Riley doing a good job at painting that corner. Miller actually made two starts in their last SEC series against Arkansas behind the plate. Clocked over Eccles, twist foul. Also close to an extra base hit. It's 0 for 2 this year in pinch hit opportunities. And pinch hitting is hard to do, coming off the bench cold and having to go up there and expect it to throw up a hit on the board or just have a good at bat. But you kind of have to just put yourself in a certain mentality to be able to be successful in that role. Line right to Avery Gels. The encore to the home run flashing the glove at first. In a hard hit by Miller, but Avery Gell shaded over in the 3 4 hole. I mean, if they were playing normal defense, she definitely would have got this past the defenders. But again, we talk about spray charts a little bit and their shifts, and that definitely played to their advantage. Yeah, perfectly positioned. We'll have another pinch hitter here. Allie Curlin is now going to hit in the nine spot. So Tony Baldwin pulling out all the stops here off his bench. Curlin, a Penn State transfer over last eight. He's at 270 this year, has four home runs. And she is four of 11 in pinch hit spots, so a familiar role for her. And we'll present a left-on-left -left matchup for Trilicha. I said this earlier, but it is so tough as a lefty hitter to hit a ball that's moving away from you, especially with Riley's heavy drop ball. Now a, now a hitter's count for Curlin. He's had a long career. Graduate season from Burke, Virginia. Rolled over. Walsh skitters into her glove. So Trilicek has come in, retired all five batters that she has seen. And that's the third ground ball out. And that's why she's so good in relief. I mean, she provides just a different look than the other pitchers. And Lexi Delbray and Elizabeth Hightower being the only lefty on the staff. Well, it's Dallas Goodnight chops it foul at home plate. Trilicek for now would be in line for the win. Delbray left when the Gators were trailing. Delbray's last batter was Jaden Fields to end the fourth. Kearney was the one who homered against Delbray to at that time put Georgia in front. And the Gators responding in the last half frame with a two-run Avery Gels homer. And Trilicek now ahead 0-2. And Dallas Goodnight looking to go three for four. I mean, she already has two hits on the day. Last time lined out to right field. Kyle Egan snagged one. But Dallas Goodnight so good with so much speed, able to just chop it and leg it out to first base. Waste pitch that time from Trilicek, one and two. I think you have two choices when, you, when you're when you 0-2. You can either go right at them, or you can try to throw around the zone, make them get themselves out and... Polk just foul. Dallas Goodnight's had a, a multi-hit day. Infield hit, an RBI single with two outs in the third. 
What a great piece that came over from Alabama, coming back to her home state of Georgia. One of the top recruits when she went to Alabama. We've talked about Kenja Falby and Skylar Wallace's speed with the Florida Gators, but Dallas Goodnight is 14 for 15 in stolen bases. When she's on, she's also a threat on the base path. Work hard to improve her offensive game with Danielle Gibson, volunteer assistant, Arkansas great. Rolls this to Eccles and Trilicek, six up, six down. Right now in line for the win. Gators in line for a series victory if they can hold on, looking for insurance on the other side. The Florida Gators have matched out 24 hits over the first two games of the series, have an 8-7 lead. Yeah, looking for insurance in the bottom of the six, up a lone run because looking ahead, Alicia, in the top of the seventh, you got Sarah Mosley, Jada Kearney, and Jaden Fields, the toughest part of the Georgia lineup, presumably for Trilicek to try to get through. Definitely, undoubtedly, the toughest part of their lineup, and especially going into the seventh inning, I think it's really important that Riley Trilicek and the defense do their best to lock it down so they can come out with the win. But definitely a few insurance insurance runs wouldn't hurt right now. Shelby Walters back to work in the sixth. It's been the two pitchers they've thrown primarily in SEC play today. Walters, three innings in relief, has allowed three earned runs on five hits, two walks, no strikeouts. Has thrown now 70 pitches. Kerr picks two innings, five earned runs on six hits. Two and one. Reagan Walsh, a multi-hit day, part of the production in the top half of the lineup. Gators have had RBI from seven through nine as well. Walsh pummels one over third, and that's foul. Walsh probably feeling like she needs to redeem herself after getting no hits last night. Already powering two hits today. Walsh was 0 for 4 last night, struck out. Overall, has had a really good stretch. Entered today, second most RBI in SEC play for the Gators with 11. Now has 12 after a first inning RBI single. Unloads on one to center. Good night to the warning track. Says good night to Walsh for the first out. <laughs> Dallas Goodnight with her glasses on. So she's able to see that ball, the sun sitting behind home plate. I know it's tough for the outfielders to see those balls in the air, but does a good job at tracking it, getting that out. She's got the double duty working with the uh, eye black and the sunglasses. Yeah, I'm, I'm loving those sunglasses too. And I have a little bit of swag out there. Mm. Egan, bouncer back up the middle, Kuma backhand pick, the cheater rest jump throw is picked out by Fields. What a great play by Kuma. I mean, just the range that she has to be able to get there up the middle and know that she has to, she has to get in the air to turn her body and throws on the ground, but Fields does such a good job at seeing that and is able to pick it up, you can see She's almost behind second base when she fields that ball and makes that throw, but like I said, just a great job, such athleticism for her to get that out. Here's Sam Rowe, lays one down towards Walters, overhands wide, just uncomfortable on that throw. Sam Rowe heads down to second. That's the second time we've seen her float a ball on to first. And it will be a hit, but a third error that allows Sam Rowe to head down to second. And a lot of the time, when you're playing softball and, you know, you're facing pitchers that you don't necessarily know if they can throw that well, you try to take advantage of that, and Samro does just that, hitting it right or bunting it right to the pitcher, and Sam Walter is not able to make a good throw and exploiting that. So what should have been the third out extends the inning. Gator is trying to add insurance. Kylie Macy will come back in when you return.
for the second time in this series. The Georgia Bulldogs will head to Kylie Macy out of the pen from Grayson, Georgia. And Kylie Macy and Madison Kerbix are very similar in the pitches that they throw. Kylie Macy's going to throw that rise ball, that spinny rise ball. She's going to throw from 56 to 61 miles per hour. And she's also going to try to finesse. But in order to be successful, Kylie Macy is going to have to keep changing those eye levels. And with that, she does produce a lot of pop-ups, but she's her best when she does throw that rise ball change-up combo. So Emily Wilkie will pinch hit as well. This in the seven spot. Wilkie had a pinch hit single yesterday. That was the first batter that Madison Kerpick saw. So this will be the first time she faces Kylie Macy. Sam Rowe is on base with two outs, an infield bunt hit, and the third error, an E1 charge to Shelby Walters, has set up Sam Rowe in scoring position. Gators had 10 two out RBI yesterday. Georgia with already two outs. All they need is just a pop out or a, a ground ball to get out of this inning so they're able to put a few runs up on the board to try to pull this win out in the seventh. Macy rears back for a strike, three and one. Macy yesterday, two and two thirds innings in relief. Four runs, three of those earned, two walks, three strikeouts. Her first inning pitching, though, she really did stop the momentum of the Florida Gators. And I think the second inning, she gave up a few hits. And that's when the Florida Gators got adjusted to Kylie Macy and her pitches. She had essentially the brightest spot for Georgia pitching-wise in this series, that 1-2-3 inning at least she talked about yesterday in the third. Staff that now has allowed 25 hits. 21 runs. Strike three, right down center. Wilkie goes down looking. Georgia down to their final three outs with three of the best in the SEC. Sarah Mosley, Jada Kearney, Jaden... Well, you want some drama? You got it. Here in the seventh, Georgia down to their final three outs. Only down a run. And you have two of the top home run hitters in the SEC will be the first two to the plate, Sarah Mosley, Jada Kearney, and Jaden Fields, all slated for the Bulldogs, the heart of their order. First pitch low, ball one. And it only takes one swing to tie this game, but I think if you're Mosley, if you're Kearney, or if you're Fields, you're just trying to get on base. Pass the bat. Mosley lines one into center. Phoebe in on a slide. She's got it. A clutch play out in center takes away a hit from Sarah Mosley. Really good job by Kendra Falby. You see her first step in. She sees where the ball's going to go. She knows she has to get low and get under that ball and just slides to it and gets her glove under it for that first out, helping out her pitcher, Riley Trilicek. Here's Jada Kearney. Last time she was to the plate was in the fourth inning and sent one essentially over the big video board in left center field and it gave Georgia a 7-6 lead at the time. 1-0. High bouncer over to third, Eccles. And Trilicek has retired all eight that she's seen in line for the win. Gators one out away. Trilicek again, if she gets out of this inning, she'll get the win, but it's just so good in relief. And you see that now showing through. But her defense is also doing their job and working behind her. Two and two thirds, perfect innings. It's up to Jaden Fields, last chance for the dogs. Last time she was in this ballpark in 2021, she hit 
not just one, but two home runs to help send Georgia to a World Series. They need a run here to send this to a bottom half of the frame. High bouncer to the hole at short, stabbed by Wallace, no play. Nice job just to keep that in the infield. So Fields keeps it alive for Georgia, an infield hit. And the tying run now at first would have to think a pinch runner will come in here for Fields. And as I said before, that's all you want right now in this situation. You're down one run. You just need base runners to try to push him across and get him in. And good job by Skylar Wallace not letting that trail to the outfield. But I think either way, I think Fields would have stayed at first. Well, it's Lindy Ray Davis now. Haley Eaton will pinch run at first. Georgia down to their final out. Davis has grounded out twice, been hit by a pitch. That's the first base runner against Riley Trilicek in her two and two thirds in relief. A left on left. Georgia has not lost a game two of a series this year, have not lost an SEC series. There's a strike. A little bit too much over the plate by Trilicek, but Lindy, Lindy Ray Davis didn't bite, so I guess that's okay. Now 1-1 one, one the count. I think it's really important that Riley Chilicek keeps her heartbeat down. I mean, this is such an intense situation with a home run hitter up to bat, run around first, up by one run. I think you just got to try to make the ball dance, not try to do too much. Davis right back to Chilicek, underhands the first, and Florida takes the series. Knock off Georgia, who's lost their first SEC series this year. An offensive explosion from the Gators. An incredible three innings in relief from Riley Trilicek. Wallace homers for the fourth time this weekend, and the Gators get it done over the Dogs. What a great performance by the Florida Gators all weekend. Like I said, tit for tat on the offensive side, but Riley Trilicek coming in today and just doing a great job in relief. So we'll step aside when we return. We'll talk to one of the stars of the weekend, Skyler Wallace. Gators win it eight to seven and take the series from Georgia. What a fun game on this Saturday in front of over 2,400 fans. A sellout today at Katie Seashell Presley Stadium. The Gators take the series eight runs on 12 hits. The difference in the end, a two run Avery Gell's home run, her first of the season in the fifth inning. So you had Wallace Homer today, Alicia Ocasio. You had the great pitching performance from Riley Trilicek who gets the win, Shelby Walters gets the loss. Overall, this Florida team is getting hot offensively at the right time. I'd like to say the same exact thing, getting hot at the right time. And I think their offense really shined through these past two games. and showed great resiliency when Georgia bit back. The Florida offense came right, like you said, with the right hook and punched back, able to get the second win of the day or the weekend. So the Georgia Bulldogs losing their first SEC series this year. With the loss, they now fall to 11 and five. Gators now two games above 500 in SEC play at eight and six. Tennessee winning earlier today, so Tennessee Getting some help here from the Gators. They have created more distance between them and the rest in terms of winning an SEC regular season title. Throwing out some uh, player of the game bands or just kind of, I'm not sure what Coach Walton's throwing out there, but usually he has the player of the game shirts and things like that that they do in that post game huddle. We'll have Skylar Wallace coming up in just a little bit, but you talk about her weekend, Alicia, and the three home runs yesterday, a career high, only the third time in Florida history that's happened. Then she comes back has a couple of walks today, doesn't see a whole lot to hit, and when she gets that one opportunity for a ball over the heart of the plate, she hit her fourth home run back in the second inning. I mean, Skylar Wallace is shining. Her power was shown all weekend thus far with her home runs. I mean, she got walked a few times today, but 
a great hitter is just going to wait for that right pitch, like you said, and just homers another time. And she's leading this team. You, you, Tony Baldwin right now, Alicia, when you talk to Georgia and, and they huddle up tonight, get ready for game three, will be on our air, SEC Network Plus, 12 Eastern first pitch. What's the message to Georgia? Who Their offense showed up today for sure. The pitching has some things that they have to figure out tomorrow to get some outs. I think what you tell this Georgia team is they're doing a great job offensively. They're putting some runs up on the board. They're hitting the ball well. Like I said before, UF is just coming out on top right now, but I definitely tell them just to remember who they are. I mean, and they got to limit those errors and just take care of the softball a little bit more in order to pull out those wins and limit their mistakes because good teams are going to exploit that. Yeah, they came into this series a total of 13 errors in SEC play, and they've had five this weekend, two yesterday, three costly errors today that certainly come back to haunt them. Madison Kerpix got the start, didn't, was not a part of the decision. Shelby Walters, the loss now 15-3. and three. How about Riley Trilicek, who comes in, Gators trailed by a run against this lineup. She retired the first seven to the plate before Jaden Fields got an infield hit and then was able to really get the job done in that seventh against Mosley and Kearney, two of the more feared batters in the SEC. A, a sterling three innings for her en route to the win. I think Trilicek did a really great job. She looked extremely poised coming in and winning this ball game. She has a couple of saves under her belt, so she's not unfamiliar with this predicament coming in with, you know, coming in for the Gators and, and putting a few zeros on the board. I think she did a really great job today at locating her pitches and making the ball dance and came out with the win today. But I also think the defense worked well behind her. And the regular season success for the Gators over the dogs continues. Of course, we mentioned the postseason success for Georgia in this ballpark. But now it's Florida again who wins another regular season series over Georgia. And the last time Georgia had won a regular season series was 2011 against the Florida Gators. So that continues. Gators take the first two, 13 to four final in six innings yesterday and now an 8-7 final today. Led by Skylar Wallace, Avery Gales. Gators getting production up and down this lineup today. Got RBI from seven through nine in the order. RBI from one, two, one, three, and four in the lineup. So up and down, it's been a really consistent effort for the Florida Gators who now have mashed 25 hits, a total of 21 runs in the first two games of this series. Now two games over 500 in the SEC. Now we welcome in the star of the weekend, one of the stars that have certainly shined the brightest. That's Skyler Wallace, Skyler, Kyle Crooks, Alicia Ocasio upstairs. What's up, guys? Yeah, what's How up? How you well, doing? What's up with you? That's what matters because Shoot, four home complain. runs. What's going on? How are you seeing the ball right now? Because uh, I want some of what you're eating right now. Yeah, um, well, everyone asked me what I ate for breakfast yesterday, and it was just <laughs> sweet berries. So um, shout out to sweet berries for the chicken pesto sandwich. But it's really just working and uh, finding ways to hit the ball hard. That's really all I'm trying to do up there. Um, nothing, nothing I can't. You know, if it's out of the zone, I'm not trying to swing at it. And if it's in the zone, I'm trying to hit it hard. Well, you're definitely hitting the ball hard in the zone. And I just want to commemorate you right now for all those home runs. You're doing a great job <laughs> for the Gators. You. What's your mentality, though, going into tomorrow after having such a great weekend already? Yeah, I think it's just staying within ourselves. You know, don't let the, the moment get bigger than what it is. We've had the series, but let's come out and uh, jump on them early. You know, let's keep the bats rolling and start from where we ended right now and just have some fun, play Gator softball. And Skyler, we're about to show your home run back in the second inning. You didn't see a whole lot to hit today. You walked twice, but when you did get an opportunity to see a strike in that second inning, what did you see on that pitch specifically? Yeah, I mean, I know she worked a lot of screwballs yesterday to me, and uh, that wasn't really an option for today with the umpire behind the plate. So I was really just focusing on, you know, making sure it was belt high and in the zone somewhere, and I was just really trying to take my hands up the middle on it. So just saw a little bit inside and was ready to drive it. Well, Skyler, appreciate the time. Congratulations on the series win. Four home runs for you over the last two games, and I'm sure you, you hope to keep it going tomorrow. Congratulations. Yeah, I hope so. Go Gators. All right, that is the star of the weekend, making her case for SEC Player of the Year. Skylar Wallace, four home runs in the first two games. Gators have claimed the series an 8-7 final. For our entire crew, led by Jeremy Otter, Alicia Ocasio, I'm Kyle Crook saying so long and good night here on this Saturday series finale.